Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I will show how to make thick mud for terrain scenery and dioramas. I will cover all the steps needed to get to this finished result. As a starting point I will be using this diorama base which I have already built using the following materials. For an in-depth tutorial on how to make this, I refer to my raptor diorama which can be found on my channel. To dive straight into the mud, I begin by making the first layer. I make a mixture of acrylic paste with the following additives. As the next step I'll be adding some cork material to this. A good option is to use this material, which is often used in railroad scenery. For this video we will be making a homemade version of this. The material I'll be using for this is this cork board. This material is often used to create rocky outcrops on a small scale. To do this I simply snap off some edges using pliers. I've already used it a few times in my videos to make bases for miniatures. So you could basically hold on to these for when you need them. But what I'm actually after are these little bits we snipped off in the process of making them. During past builds I saved all 2753 of these in this container. To get them in their final shape I will be showing three ways to do this. The first one is simply by using pliers and snapping parts of them. The second one is by giving them a few spins in this coffee grinder. I first tried this wireless attempt and then added some electricity. The third option is to use a blender to do this. What this blender as well as the coffee grinder is going to do is cut away all the sharp edges and turn them into these little textured pieces. You can basically decide what scale you want to create simply by blending it longer or shorter. Apart from what I'll be using this material for, there's lots of other possibilities in which you can use this material in your terrain making. With this leftover finer material for example, you can make fine gravel and ballast or use it in your ground cover scenery. With the new material freshly made, I can now add this to the mixture made earlier. If it's not mixing, you can always add a splash of water. Thank you. 
When mixed, I then apply it onto the base. To help doing this more effectively, I'm going to make use of something specially designed for this purpose. This is commonly known as the Swiss Army Knife of terrain making. I chose to use this model for the base, which I gave a repaint. To add some more detail, I'll add some bits of natural branches. I'll also be adding some of these grass stuffs. I gave them a haircut and then worked them into the ground cover. With the grass added, I then used this strange customer to trample them into the ground. Using the paste mixture, I then weather the grass tufts to blend them in. I also added some splashes of mud onto the model. When this was done, I made a thinner version of the paste mixture and used it to fill in the rest of the base. For the next step, I make a new mixture of acrylic paste and paint. I'll then add tile grout to this and keep adding more until it almost matches the look of the previous layer. To make it stick a bit better, I spray the base with some water and then add the new layer. It doesn't need full coverage, just on areas where you want some different texture. As soon as I add water to this, this will press it down and blend it together. The more water is added, the denser the texture will be. 
Instead of water, I'll add scenery glue to this to secure it onto the base. Using this glue mixture, I've added two layers. While still wet, you can create some areas with different textures. To give some color accents to this, I've made a few pigment washes and added them randomly. This is then followed with some scattered model leaves. To weather the leaves, I take some of the grout mixture and dissolve it in water, which is then added as a wash over the leaves. When everything is fully dry, you may notice that especially the grout mixture layer has turned much lighter. I blend this in by adding some of the base color I used and then give it a wash. Even though I added a generous amount of scenery glue to this, the last layer I added is still a bit unstable at this stage. To secure and harden this, it's really recommendable that you finish with an acrylic medium. For a wet looking finish, a good choice would be gloss varnish or glaze medium. I will be airbrushing this on, but if you don't have access to one, you can make a mixture of this medium with water and then use a small spray bottle or pipette to apply it. To mask off an area where I don't want the gloss finish, I partially cover the base using a shower cap. As well as giving it a wet appearance, this acrylic medium will provide a hard shell and make it more durable. I then gave the base some more detail by adding a few plants and flowers. To create a few pools of water, I mixed some epoxy resin with a few drops of acrylic paint. I begin by adding a small amount and see where it wants to go before adding some more. That brings us to the end of this video. I want to give my thanks to my patrons and everyone who helps support this channel. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and to see you in the next one. Until then, thank you for watching and take care.